Hi everyone, this is an Alcohol Free Life channel where we learn to live sober one day at a time. My name is Terry G. If you can take a second, can you please subscribe to my channel and take another second and hit that like button. What we're gonna talk about today is quitting drinking. I'm gonna lay out some steps for you that'll help you in your journey of early recovery, but also improve your success rate when you go ahead and quit drinking. Because quitting alcohol, especially if you're an alcoholic and it's causing difficulties in your life, can be a big deal and it can cause a lot of stresses and a lot of problems, especially in early recovery coming off the alcohol. It really, really can. Because you know how I know that? Because it did for me. But the first thing I wanna bring up is if you're quitting alcohol, I don't care if you're drinking two beers a day or you're drinking 22 beers a day or alcohol or booze, whatever you're drinking, go and see your doctor. Go and see your medical doctor and let them know what you're up to. Because quitting alcohol, cold turkey, can be very dangerous and have some really negative effects on your health. It really can. It's one of the only drugs that if you quit like that, you can go in the withdrawal, physical withdrawal, your heart can stop beating and you can die, believe it or not. So make sure you do that. I don't care what anybody says or anything else you take from this video. If you take that and go and see a doctor, I've done my job. Get medical advice before quitting, for sure, 100%. The first one I wanna start off with, if you wanna quit alcohol, is set out some goals why you're quitting and why you wanna quit. For myself, the reason I wanted to quit because my health was being affected, my wife was on the way out the door, my financial difficulties, my whole life was falling apart. So one of the main reasons I wanted to quit drinking was it was very, very simple. My goal was to improve my life. So you might want to think about why you want to quit drinking. Okay, for some of us, it's easy. For some of us, it's difficult. Because when we quit alcohol, it was such, for myself, was such a big part of me, I needed really to focus on why I want to quit and what was alcohol doing to me that I wanted to improve in my life. And basically for myself, I was a full-blown alcoholic. So my goal was to quit alcohol and rebuild my life. So telling your family, close friends, maybe your kids, your wife, in-laws, you know, the, the, your immediate circle. Tell them what you're up to. Tell them you're gonna quit alcohol and you wanna change your life and alcohol is causing you difficulties. For they have some understanding and you can get some support from them if you need it. Or, you know, if you're having difficulties just in coping with life stresses because you've stopped alcohol, at least they know. At least they can, you know, figure out what's going on and give you some proper support you know not putting you down or you know being negative to you you know sort of uplifting you so tell your support network tell your immediate family what you're up to the, the another one i want to talk to you about is triggers triggers are a big deal when you quit alcohol okay and what triggers are is basically people places and things that give you the idea that maybe a drink's okay or bring you back to old memories that was drinking was okay. So triggers in your life. What are some are what are some examples of triggers? Okay, going to your old bars where you used to drink. Uh-uh, that's a trigger. Don't do that. Don't go to your old stomping grounds where you used to drink. So figuring out triggers, old drinking buddies, and I'm not talking about drinking buddies that maybe had a beer in one night. No, I'm not talking about those kind of drinking buddies. I'm talking about the kind of drinking buddies I hung around with. We drank cases of beer and got hammered in stone. So that those people can be triggers. They really can. Another trigger can be stress. So identifying stressful situations for yourself for you can work on those situations so you don't have to relieve yourself of stress by taking a drink. So individuals have different triggers. For myself, I named a few triggers that were important to me and I kept an eye on those triggers, but really bars, friends, people, and dealing with your emotions and stress can be all triggers. Another one is, or number five, is being patient with yourself. Being patient with yourself is gigantic. Just remember alcoholism 
is a disease. It affects us emotionally, mentally, and physically. So when we come out of the drunken stoop or the alcoholism, the act of alcoholism, we are not gonna be functioning right. We're gonna have mood swings. We may feel stressed. We may feel angry. We may feel depressed. We may feel hopeless. All those negative effects or you know, all those negative emotions may seep in and we may feel even guilty for things we did to our family, et cetera, screwing up our lives. All those sort of things are gonna come over you like a wave and you might be impatient or intolerant to yourself. You might be hard on yourself, but I'm telling you, don't. Be very patient and self-caring to yourself. Quitting alcohol is a big, big deal for a lot of us that have had a problem with the use and abuse of alcohol. We've had an addiction with alcohol, so stopping drinking, we need to be patient and give ourselves time to heal, both mentally, emotionally, and physically okay so being patient with yourself is really critical self-love keep an open mind when it comes to yourself and the way you feel and the way you're handling life because handling life without the booze sometimes can be very very difficult therapy is a great thing to do if you're recovering from alcoholism especially in early recovery the more support we can get we can integrate into our lives in early recovery our success rate will go up dramatically. So support groups, finding professional support as in therapy can help you dramatically with your recovery. Another one is, and I want you to hang on to this one, is finding alternative things to do that are healthy. When we drank, it took a lot of time up in our lives. So when you quit drinking, if you're feeling bored, if you're feeling restless and irritable and discontent, you might wanna find some positive outlets for doing that. Like I said earlier, a positive outlet, especially when you're feeling bored, is going to support groups and talking about it in there. But you might wanna take up hobbies, you know, go to the gym, take up cooking, do something to fill up that time that you drank. Just don't sit around being a couch potato watching movies and getting bored because boredom will make you want to drink it's another trigger so find some healthily healthy alternatives to take up that time that when you're feeling bored and take up that time you use for drinking because if you're like me i drank a number of hours of the day and a number of hours of the week so when i quit drinking i had to find things in my life to take up that time Start doing things that you always thought about, that you enjoyed in the past. Start taking up those things to fill in those voids that you were drinking, okay? So that's a really, really important one. Quitting drinking and changing your life may sound easy, but let me, let me reinforce, it can be very difficult. You know, when we come in to sobriety life, when we come into a recovery life, we have to change one thing in our lives, and that's everything. So make sure you find gratitude in your daily life. Make sure you find ways that you can reward yourself. Maybe going to a movie or out for dinner or bring your wife out for a date or bringing the kids to Disneyland or going fishing or buying a boat or doing things that you enjoy doing that you really enjoy doing and you get joy from doing it. Because the road to recovery can be difficult and can be hard and sometimes can be very overwhelming. So we need to find ways that we can offset the negativity or the hardships in our lives by good things we can do. So don't forget to reward yourself, okay? Don't forget to do that. So that's just some examples of helping yourself start out in your recovery there are many things you can do to help yourself but these things that i've laid out are things that i did in early recovery and i haven't drank in, all, in many many years in decades i haven't drank okay i still have support i still reward myself i still tell friends and family if i'm having difficulties these things that i'm talking about in this group in this video or things that I do mostly to this day. But the one thing you can do, just take it one day at a time. Just take it one 
day at a time and it makes it much, much easier, okay? So I hope you quit drinking. I hope you find a great, big, happy, joyous and free life like I have from eliminating alcohol out of your life. You can have a great life without the use and abuse of alcohol. You can have fun without alcohol. You can have a contented and free life without alcohol. You don't need alcohol to fill in the voids or the defects that you think you have in your life or within you. You don't need booze for that. You really don't. We need to find ourselves. We need to find a life without the use abuse of alcohol. And you can do it. You really, really can, okay? So I hope you enjoy this video. If you did, please subscribe. If you didn't, please subscribe. <laughs> Most people won't subscribe if they didn't like it, but hit that like button, I'd really appreciate it. My name is Terry G. This is an alcohol free life channel. We're willing to live sober one day at a time. And remember, quitting alcohol is freedom. Sobriety is freedom, it really, really is. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you next week. Ciao for now, bye bye.